Welcome one and all to the official Collider Post Oscars recap. My name is Mark Ellis, and boy, are we excited uh, to bring the you guys. Host, Mark, 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 I just, I double checked the runner show. You are not the host of this post wrap up show. Uh, turns out, it turns out I am actually the host of the um, post wrap up show. You know what, John? Show. I am happy to hand this microphone <laughs> to you. <laughs> That's very classy of you. What the hell did we just watch? I kid you not. They announced La La Land. We all came in here, sat down at this table, getting ready to start. And I look at my Twitter. I turn to everybody and say, guys, why is Twitter blowing up with what the hell just happened? What the hell just happened? And we all went, we better go back inside and check. Yeah. Nope. Moonlight. Uh, I just want to point out. As I predicted, <laughs> Moonlight <laughs> wins. Don't 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 read into that. My scorecard on the evening is miserable. But uh, wow, we have. I mean, we want to talk about the whole show, but how do you not start out by talking about Steve Harvey Miss Universe Part Two? And I felt terrible mm -hmm. for Warren Beatty and Faye Dunaway. That was not their fault because for about five seconds there, all of America thought. These crazy old people, they messed it up. But it was the wrong card was in their envelope. And so they got confused when he showed it to Faye Dunaway. She just saw La La Land. So she said La La Land. And I feel terrible for the filmmakers of La La Land. Like, Jeremy, you, what were you thinking when you saw this whole thing going on? <laughs> well, well, when we were here, you were like, um, why is someone saying what's going on, what's going on? I was like, is my mic hot? What did I say? Did I say anything bad? Uh, <laughs> what did I, and then, yeah, we, we all go out there. All I know is that someone's going to be working at Del Taco come Monday. Uh, I, I, I feel bad. It's you. I can't. I can't help but laugh at a big, just cluster bomb like this. I just. I, I can't help it. <laughs> All in like in the light of everything. Everyone made good. Everyone hugged. Every the, the right awards went to the right people. And in the end, you can just laugh it off. But you do know people feel terrible. And I mean, I haven't seen because we missed half of it. We were in here. Yeah. And I'm very sure. I. I don't know the look on Damien Chazelle's face. But my mom, after like she's texted me and I'm like, ha, ah, wasn't that funny? She's like, the look on the poor director of La La Land's face <laughs> oh. was very hard. So, and she put a frown face and I was like yeah she's right and my mom brings me back to reality and it was you know it's hard to watch and it's hard for some people on the receiving end of this so yeah I mean it's hard it's funny it's that's entertainment folks. all right the person I gotta go to next here uh is Perry <laughs> <laughs> so Perry in a moment of great jubilation, you hear them say La La Land. Aside from Scott Mance, yeah. you probably yeah, are the right. person. More devastated. Not Walk that... us through your emotional pro journey as, you, as we went through all this. So I'm super into La La Land, but I'm super competitive and I like to win my pools. <laughs> I wasn't doing particularly well tonight. So I'm like, all right, if Emma Stone wins and La La Land takes best picture, I, that's that's enough of a win for me. I'm gonna be happy. So I sat at this table like, okay, it's okay. Like La La Land won. <laughs> I'm not a sore loser. This is fine. Walking back out there and seeing what happened, and and I'm not even just talking about me being a huge La La Land being upset. It's okay. It's a little funny, but it's also not funny at all. We're talking <laughs> about the biggest award this industry has to offer. <laughs> Tons of people were on the stage. Thanking their loved ones and their <laughs> colleagues, and and you you Feeling take it so proud. you take it away. You take. I mean, they handled it beautifully. Can you at put least, that on the poster oh. of La La Land? We won the best picture for eight seconds. Oh. <laughs> and and look, as the I, I have very few beliefs in life, kitties, and one of them is that the world is controlled by volcano people. The other one is that JFK was an inside job, and I think that this. Uh, was staged. I think it was a staged thing. I think that there was such controversy this year politically with diversity. There were so many people saying La La Land should win. There was such a backlash to La La Land. There was such a front for Moonlight to win Best Picture. I was with you, John Campy. I thought Moonlight should win Best Picture today, and I think that they did the best of both worlds here. I really think that, I, and I don't know how many people were in on it, I really think that this was a planned event that happened. Dennis, your thoughts on this? Well, I, while I can't agree with Mark Ellis over that, I respect your, 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 your the conspiracy theory about this. I don't think it's staged at all. 
I was preparing. You know, we knew we were going to do this post show. Yeah. I was preparing to talk about the show. I was going to talk about how much I enjoyed the show, but there was not really any big surprises for the categories. That, <laughs> well, well until the end. yes, until the end. And and you know, I know Christian Harloff hates this word, and you know, it's a, a word that I think is overused. But that that was cringeworthy. Watching no. them give back the Oscar and giving it to someone else. It's just like. Devastating. You, well, you you bring up Christian Harloff. I think he might have been backstage at the Oscars pulling all the strings. <laughs> 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 saying, we'll do this. But I also think that it was handled in such a classy way. If it if it was not staged uh -huh. and if it actually happened in the moment, I thought the way that La La Land transferred over to Moonlight was so pure, and it was everybody hugging on stage. That's what you want at the end of a long award ceremony. It was a celebration of film tonight. Regardless of how it happened, we got a celebration of movies. And in my opinion, I think that Moonlight was the most deserved. La La Land was my favorite film of the year, but Moonlight was the most deserved film to win Best Picture. I think that happened tonight. You know, it, one of the things that really stood out to me as it was all unfolding, and somebody at the table doesn't know how to mute their phones. Uh, so, <laughs> Jeremy. He's texting his mom. <laughs> my mom is texting me. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> but, but honestly, is as you know the 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 shock of what's happening, and I, I don't think it was staged at all. But as it's un unfolding, the class of the producers of La La Land, the way they took control of the stage, like guys, I'm not joking. Moonlight won. They held up the card, and they're just the, the I think the statement he made was, "I am proud to hand this over to the guys at, at Moonlight." They hugged on stage. They made a great <laughs> moment out of a potentially horrible horrible situation how weird would that have been oh god in so many other years with yeah. a best picture winning how awkward would that have been for shakespeare in love to do that <laughs> to saving private ryan i thought that was, that was handled so well and jimmy kimmel to his credit joked around with warren Beatty. Hey, warren what did you do i thought it was, <laughs> was really well done and i think that everybody with wild land and moonlight again this is what we wanted from this show is to bring more attention to movies like these we got it tonight John. i am glad warren Beatty got to put his two cents in because could you imagine yes. just right, the wheels right. turning in everyone's head if he right. did and like at first i i was thinking in my mind i'm like like sit down just don't say anything anymore <laughs> but when he explained what happened and showed the cards it's you know it's clearly not his fault and i'm glad he got to tell everybody that now, i just wish i just wish that instead of emma stone's card being in there i wish somebody slipped a deadpool card in there <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Away, I got the best oh, deadpool. Yeah. <laughs> well, well i mean uh well first of all ellis my mom says it was most certainly staged so that was her texting me so <laughs> she's on your side mom 2020 she's, that's right she's on your side my friend uh but uh <laughs> I, I am glad that, I mean, tomorrow Twitter's going to hurt. Uh, the day <laughs> after it's going to hurt. But tonight, I can promise you, everyone there is going to be at the after party laughing about it, drinking it up, and having a good time. So at least they have tonight before well, the hurricane. everyone but the La La Land yeah, crew. I, I, I would not be well, laughing it up if I was part no, of that. A, but remember, at the end of the day, La La Land won six Academy yeah. Awards, in including a couple of the big ones. They were still, ult I mean, ultimately, the picture that wins Best Picture. Moonlight is the winner of the night. But La La Land, I think, probably won more Academy Awards tonight than any other film. They did pretty well. But I cannot help but feel... I, look, as a fan, I love what happened. <laughs> I, thought, I thought that was funny and unexpected and great, and I was especially happy because the movie I said would win Best Picture in an upset won, but I thought it was great for the show. But all the, And I love the class in which it was all handled, but I do feel horrible for Damien Chazelle. Even though he's walking home with a Best Director Academy Award tonight, you know, you thought for a moment you had won Best uh, best and was it Miss Philippines at Miss Universe? I was they called her name first, something like, like you that. You win, or maybe she's the one who ultimately did win. And Kimmel joked about it when he said Steve Harvey, too. Oh, yeah, he yeah. said this is Steve Harvey all over again. It was a wild, like unexpected, weird way to finish it, but I thought a really handled perfectly. So let's actually talk about some of the winners here. So Moonlight wins Best Picture, Damien Chazelle <clears throat> wins Best Director, and actually. Uh, Mark Ellis, you said, well, two things here. I said, if La La Land does not win Best Original Screenplay, it won't win Best Picture. Mm -hmm. And then you said, whichever director between uh, Jenkins and Chazelle wins, the other movie will win Best Picture. That turned out being true. That's right. You said something, and this is probably a year ago now, that, that I always resonated with is that you like when you go to a movie and your emotional status changes after yeah. leaving it. Moonlight did that to me more than any other movie this year. And I thought La La Land was my favorite movie of the year, but Moonlight grew on me in the same way that a Manchester by the Sea 
it it moves you in a way that you don't see a lot of times. And so I think that Moonlight was I was so happy to see Moonlight get celebrated in that sense, like regardless of what we actually got from it. But from the award ceremony as a whole, I thought Jimmy <laughs> Kimmel was a fantastic host. And I would love to have him back because he let the ceremony come to him. He didn't force bits upon us. And even the ones that could have seemed a little staged when he had <laughs> the uh, the tour bus come the tour bus. in, I thought yeah. that was a great moment. That yeah. was great. The candy flying in, it 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 didn't it it wasn't a detriment to anything in the ceremony. I love the way that this show flowed. I thought it was a better flow than in past years. Dennis, like, what did you think about your overall thoughts on first of all, uh, Damien winning best director, even though he lost out on the uh, on the big prize there at the end? Well, uh, yeah, I think it's great that he won. That the reason why I feel so bad for him, I know he won, he has an Oscar. He's going to go home with with one though. Is that a lot of these Oscars, when you win them, there are individual achievements. Best Picture is the one that you can go around to everyone that had anything to do with your movie. The grip, the gaffer, yeah. crafts, or any that like they are a part of that. Of course, they don't take the Oscar home like the producers do, but that's something you can say. I was part of a best picture because it's not like when you win best director, then it's like that's your sole award. So that's why I feel so bad for Damien Chazelle because I know that as a director, he wants his whole team to take part of that. And, uh, you know, again, Perry, I hate coming back to you on this again, <laughs> but I mean, you did see a number of wins for, I know La La Land was your, number, your personal yeah. number one film of the year. It won a lot of awards, it didn't win the big one. As a fan, how are you feeling, and as somebody who's rooting for La La Land, that it does not win the best one, the big prize, but it did win six other awards. How do you walk away feeling? I don't feel very great now, and I think it's <laughs> just because of the way it played out. Had they announced Best Picture, not to harp on this one big issue, but had they announced Best Picture and right away it was Moonlight, I don't think I would have felt like this disappointed. And mm. you know, they took I it away. It, they took it away, and I understand the idea of of you know having a quick laugh and saying this adds the entertainment value to the show that you know maybe it didn't have up until that point, but. I just cannot get over what a terrible thing that was. And if I ever find out that that was planned, it, it will like break a little piece of my heart that loves this industry so much. Like if I, if I ever find out that this was staged for that reason, that would be hands down the most disgusting thing I've ever heard. It really? I mean, look, we're all, we're all talking about it, though. We're, we're all going to talk about this forever. This ended up being one of the great moments in Oscars history, seeing the Which producers is, of La La Land hand that trophy to Moonlight. That was a nice bridge that we saw the, tonight. It is the and silver I think lining that it was of it. I, I'll totally agree with you that the silver lining of this situation is that Moonlight and La La Land got the spotlight and had people talking, but... Uh, to manipulate the biggest award show, that that and, would be and awful. also to cause like seriously emotional yeah. harm to these to the people who thought they won. I mean, let's let's compare it to sports, right? Imagine if you are a Seahawks fan and you're watching the Seahawks and Patriots Super Bowl a couple years ago, and you're like, "Wow, sorry, buddy, yeah. sorry, we gotta talk <laughs> yeah. about this again." You're like, "Oh, you're <laughs> like the Seahawks <laughs> got it in the can, you know? All they gotta do hand the ball off Marshawn Lynch right in there, and then bam, it gets taken away, and that's the part I think that that." That's why I don't think it's staged. Look, I, 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 well, no, I can disagree with you guys, and I can disagree with Perry all I want, but the bottom line is that Scott Mance is on his second <laughs> bottle of gin <laughs> at the Viper Room. I, I just really think it had it been, and I wouldn't put it over the Hollywood machine to do a stage thing. I, I wouldn't. To me, though, it felt too messy and too awkward mm -hmm. uh, for a thing. Had this been staged, it would have been, they come out, La La Land wins it, they start giving their speeches, and then Jimmy Kimmel comes out, we just got a call from upstairs with the with the accountants from uh, uh, Clearinghouse. Price yeah. Waterhouse Coopers, yeah. That's, there it is. And the, the, the wrong envelope was handed to them, blah, blah, blah. It would have, I think it would have felt a little cleaner. This just felt odd and mm -hmm. messy and awkward. And I mean, like Christian Harlow's favorite word, cringy. Mm -hmm. it, I think it was just a little bit too much of that for it to have been faked. And if word ever got out, yeah. this would be too dangerous of gamble because if yeah. word ever got out, out of all the moving oh. pieces that would have had to have been involved, that ends the Oscars. No, like never again would the Oscars have any credibility. And I got a lot of people asking in the chat board right now, recheck Denzel's envelope. Recheck oh. Denzel's <laughs> envelope. And now there's gonna be 
and he calls for everybody wanting oh, second totally. votes yeah, there, on all this kind be. of stuff. So we, instead of going into the the individual awards, because tomorrow morning on Movie Talk, which by the way, our good friend uh, Michael Rappaport is going to be joining us tomorrow oh, really? to break down. Yeah, who is who <laughs> can't is imagine a, what he'll have to say. He's about a big this. movie guy. He is actually an account. He's he's an Oscars nut. He he loves the Oscars. Uh, we're going to go down through and we'll break down the categories tomorrow a bit more. I just want to get you know your overall impressions, Jeremy. Let's start with you. Your overall things, the things that stood out to you at the show, and what you're walking away from this year's Oscars with. Well, personally, I'm looking forward to talking Logan with Michael Rappaport tomorrow. That's going to be a <laughs> lot of fun. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, the, the, this year, what I loved about it is, like I said, usually there's a path, there's a cut path. This movie sweeps a lot, a lot, a lot. This one, there, there was uh, this movie over here won a little bit. This one here won a little bit. This one here won a little bit. It, it it was, I don't want to say all over the place, because that sounds messier than what I'm trying to say. I'm just saying there was a lot of movies sprinkled into this, and nothing really swept the Oscars. Um, it's not like it did the Return of the King thing or the Titanic thing, where you're like, oh, I'm just going to vote for that, and I know I'm going to win. Um, the end capping it off, uh, it was a, it, it's a memorable thing. Uh, I know what Perry's saying in the sense that it's like, oh, yeah, that'd be a crazy publicity thing that we would remember, but at the expense of other people is where, you know, you kind of you draw the line. Uh, but I also do agree that every conspiracy theorist, I'm like, you don't know how many people would need to be silenced. And oh, it's like hundreds yeah. upon hundreds <laughs> of people, and that's just impossible. Uh, I really had a good time, as I do a lot of the Oscars. It really is about the company, you know? Like, that's why I spent the yeah. Oscars here rather than at my apartment just watching watching it on my television <laughs> because every year my friends and I back home would have an Oscar party. So we have an Oscar party here. It really is the company during the Oscars that will make or break the Oscars, not what happens in the TV, but what happens in the room of the TV. Had a good time with you guys. That's what I take away from it, John. Mark Ellis, Brown what about you? It. Your overall thoughts? What stood out to you about the overall show and what are you walking away uh, with? The unpredictability, John. I mean, we had a lot of movies that were great this year and they all got rewarded in some small way, mm -hmm. except for 13 hours. <laughs> Other than that, I think that... It did uh, get a nomination. I think it did get a nomination, and we will harken ourselves on that. Jimmy Kimmel did a fantastic right. job hosting the Oscars, especially with the hand he was dealt at the end. I think that there's a lot of people that would melt under that spotlight mm -hmm. and under that controversy and not know what to do. <laughs> and run off stage and yes. hide. <laughs> yeah. He did a, yeah, yeah. Imagine Anne Hathaway and James Franco hosting that Oscar. <laughs> they they <laughs> wouldn't come back on stage. No, they, they would not have come back oh. on stage. He did, he did such a good job throughout the Oscars. And I, and it wasn't the best opening monologue I've ever seen. It probably wasn't even in my top 15, but he did a good job hosting the entire show. I liked watching it. And I think that this Oscars, if anything, brought us back the element of surprise. This is why I love watching this show because I don't really care about handing trophies to people who are playing fake. I, I don't care about it, but watching this, it's unpredictable. And so now I can watch with all you guys and we can get a reaction to the room. I can text my mom and we can talk about, oh, I didn't know that was gonna happen. We did not know what was going to happen. Whether it was staged or whether it just happened like that, this was an unpredictable Oscars. That's what we're gonna take away from the 2016 Oscars in 2017. Dennis, what stood out to you and what are you walking away Well, with? unlike Mark Ellis, I do care about people getting statues <laughs> playing <laughs> fake other people. I think it's, I I think it's fun. Bit. I care a little uh, bit. Yeah. So um, I, I'll take away, yeah, I mean, it has to be the ending because no, there was nothing surprising up to that point. I mean, there was a little bit I thought, okay, I thought Denzel Washington was going to win, but when Casey Affleck won, it wasn't a huge surprise because he was. it was definitely a two-horse race. There was a lot of those situations, but nothing like that best picture. That, I mean, that was crazy. Like, it, it was it was just unbelievable. I just can't believe that actually happened. It's something that is <laughs> so choreographed, so planned. Like, I don't know how... How did that happen? That, right? Yeah. Am I right? Am uh, I right? I don't, I don't know. But <laughs> I had fun watching it with you guys. That's the most important thing. Having fun. We were here drinking, eating, and having a good time, and, and talking movies. Because that's what we We talk yeah. movies all year long, and this is kind of the... Even though it's not the end of the year, this is the culmination of the movie season for that year, and then now we're going to talk about all the movies this year. Perry. Yeah, uh, th that ending will probably color the ceremony for me <laughs> for the rest of my life. It's also a little unfortunate that Moonlight couldn't have had that last moment all to itself, which which is probably the most disappointing thing. And it, it also is unfortunate because everything was running so well and so smoothly, and the pacing of the show was like never lagged at all. I was never bored, always on my toes. He did such a good job of intermittently putting his jokes in while also giving the categories the respect they needed. Most of the presenters 
presenters had done very great jobs too, actually getting up there and making like cracking their jokes. Those little segments that they did with um with uh, Charlie Theron and then Seth Rogen watching. Oh, their what inspired room. you? And yeah. like just what it was in the beginning with them watching it and them coming out with like the icon from that movie that was really moving. And then to cap it off with the Matt Damon joke was absolutely hilarious. Really, Jimmy Kimmel did a great job. Even though La La Land didn't break records, it was just for the for the most part up until the end, just like that overwhelming feeling of everybody being so happy for everything that won. And it was, you know, it's crazy how many deserving people are on the nominee list. So even though I didn't win the pool, and I would be a little angry about that, <laughs> I, it's not a situation where I would ever say, oh, you know, that person was not deserving of this honor. I mean, La La, La, La Land and Emma Stone is probably the award I'm most hyped about. Zootopia and Piper, I'm really happy that that won the short award but overall it was a good night i i can't be super enthusiastic though because that ending <laughs> there are people all across america this goes back to the super bowl we just had where people tuned out went to bed thinking that the atlanta <laughs> falcons <laughs> won the super bowl there are because remember right now it is like almost one o'clock in the morning on the east coast the moment they read la la land there are a lot of TV. Okay, great. Now yeah. we know who won. Turned off. There are millions of Americans that are going to wake up tomorrow morning thinking La La Land. My mom just texted me. Right? She just texted <laughs> she really? me. Our she moms, said she, dude. she missed Best Picture. Who won? And I do not know how to write. <laughs> yeah, like, what well, kind say? of La La Land, but mostly Moonlight. I don't we're know wait, we're say, not mom. sure yet. We're not sure yeah. yet. La La Land got a clip, <clears throat> sweetie. Have a good night. Um, but, you know, to, to me, this was a fantastic Oscars. Mm -hmm. I love, because, you know, what the Oscars should be and what it always tries to be but doesn't always quite make it, to me, tonight really felt like it. It was a celebration of the year in film. And it felt like that to me right from the opening with that Justin Timberlake musical number, which at first, the first two seconds I thought, this could be bad. But then you realize <laughs> the whole audience there got up into it. It brought an energy to it. I agree. I thought Kimmel, I... You know, everybody knows I really would prefer to have a true blue movie personality hosting the Oscars. I thought Kimmel did a great job. I thought he did a really good job. He navigated his way through it very well. The way he handled that final situation was such class. I love the fact that Hacksaw Ridge won an Academy Award. I love the fact that Lion got so much attention. I love the fact that La La Land won a bunch of awards and Moonlight won a bunch of awards and that all these films were celebrated. And we can say... Suicide Squad, the Academy Award <laughs> yeah. winner. Suicide Squad uh, is a part of it as well. But overall, to me, it was everything the Oscars should be, which is a celebration of the movies, the things that like transcend. We said this earlier: transcend gender and you know sexual orientation and and financial background and national borders and race and whatever, because we all tell stories. And it felt like tonight was just a big celebration of that. And I dug it. I loved all the Matt Damon stuff. I thought earlier in the night, I thought they'll probably do a lot of Matt Damon stuff and we'll probably get tired. I never got tired of it. The <laughs> yeah. whole way through, I thought it was great. And I absolutely love the Academy Awards this year. I hope Jimmy Kimmel comes back. Yeah. And I hope they do this all again uh, next year. So we'll just wrap it up here. Jeremy, yeah. don't forget, guys, we will go through the categories. We'll break down all of our anal analysis of the categories and the winners tomorrow. Maybe the... Uh-oh. I've got to... I've got to um, <laughs> it says... I have on it. <laughs> Uh, that doesn't say anything. Okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah. Josh McCougar, ladies Josh and gentlemen. Yeah. Josh with, his, with his solid pants that you couldn't see on camera. You know, I will say this, though. And like, if this, this is the 89th Academy Awards, right? This is the 89th uh, one? I think so. We'll round up to 20 categories per year. That's the 89 Best Picture uh, uh, Awards that have been awarded. That's about 1,780 awards in general, and this happened once. You know? Yeah, it's, it's the happened, first which time is crazy to think. ever. So one in 1,780, that's a pretty solid average, so I'll give them that. Uh, so, yeah, we will pick up and do our full analysis and breakdown once we've had a chance to sleep on it, inform our relatives that no, La La Land did not actually win the Academy Award. <laughs> Sorry, Mom. I'll text you. <laughs> In the morning. Make sure you join us for that. But, uh, man, what a crazy way to end this thing. We're, we're, I wish we had the camera on because we had 25 of us in there going, what? Yeah, yeah. Like screaming Stone at face. The well, it, it was the equivalent of a Super Bowl, of, of the ending. Yes. Oh, like, yeah. like the end yeah. of two years ago or like JTE going crazy about the Patriots. I mean, it was that crazy of an ending, except this one I think people knew about. Well, uh, I want to thank uh, everybody at the table here with me. First of all, starting with you guys, 
thousand, tens of thousands of you guys have been watching us through the evening. And I I thought these would be great for later, but I thought we'd have like 2,000 people watching because everybody would be watching TV. Thank you so much for being a part of this whole thing tonight. Thank you, Jeremy Johns, for being a part of all this tonight. Where can people find you online? Uh, people can find me at Jeremy Johns on YouTube, Twitter, uh, the rest of the internet. You can also find my show, Awesome Tacular, on the Verizon Go 90 network. And you can find me here on Movie Talk tomorrow where we talk more about this craziness. <laughs> Mark Ellis, where can people find you? Uh, you can find me at Mark Ellis Live on Twitter. I will be tweeting heavily about these events. John, who's the best band to ever come out of Canada? Oh. Uh, Bare Naked Ladies. <laughs> the answer is Rush, and they said all the world's a stage. We are merely players. Thanks to everybody who came out to the comedy store last night, and I'm sorry about Ken Knapsack photobombing everybody. <laughs> Dennis, where can people find you? You guys can find me on Twitter at ThinkHero or on Instagram, Dennis.TZNG, and then you'll find me on uh, Movie Talk on Fridays. Uh, and by the way, it was Rush. You're correct. <laughs> Perry Nemiroff, where can people find you? Surprise. That was actually me photobombing all of you. So <laughs> you got me in your pictures. <laughs> you can find me. Don't laugh. No. This is why I, this is why I could see never. The behind the scenes. It's a great thing. This is why I could never be a comedian, though, because it's like I get halfway through the delivery of my joke and then laugh at it. <laughs> <laughs> You nailed it. The actual winner is Ken Napsack. <laughs> you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at PNMRAW. And you guys can follow me on Facebook and on Twitter simply at John Campio. Wow, we'll have a lot to go over tomorrow. I'm dying to hear Rappaport's reaction to the ending of that thing tomorrow once we've all had chances. But we want to hear your reaction to all that. Did it add to the entertainment value? Do you Did it detract for you? Were you somebody who was cheering for Lion Line? Were you somebody who was cheering for Moonlight? Were you like me and cheering for Hacksaw Ridge? Whatever, let us know. Guys, this has been an incredible Oscar day from our pre-show to our live coverage throughout to our post-show here. Thank you guys so much for making it even more special. Join us again tomorrow for Movie Talk. And until next time, bye-bye. Hey, guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.